Hey Guru Nation, how's it going? Re I wanted to make a really super quick video for you guys today. Um, this is for the medical assistants, this is for the CNAs, this is for the LVNs, this is for the LPNs. Any position in healthcare along those lines, um, which is considered like an entry level role, usually they're constricted by upward mobility. You know, those are valuable jobs, very rewarding positions, whether they're in offices or hospitals or nursing homes. But unfortunately, in those type of careers, you reach a level where you just cannot climb further. And I bring to you clinical research. And if you are watching this and you know somebody who needs to be watching this, send it to them, please. So if you're an MA and you're working at a private practice, medical clinic, hospital, nursing home, what you want to do, you want to simultaneously, first thing you want to do is go watch my five hour video. You got to learn the fundamentals. Then I want you to find in your community, ideally a research clinic. Okay. That's number one. When you start running out of those places, you want to find a private practice that may have research within it and you want to simultaneously apply and start networking to all these places the good thing about ma cnas lvns lpns you guys are always in demand so if you walk into one of these places like the private practice that i my research clinic lives inside they are always short staffed they're always hiring so if someone were to walk in there, an MA or a CNA, and say, hey, you know what, are you guys hiring? They'll take your resume. And then you can ask, hey, are you guys also doing clinical research here? I'm actually really interested in clinical research. If you did this at my clinic, they'd probably refer you to me. And I'm, I'm the research site director, and I'd be the one talking to you. So let's say it's not a private practice. Let's say you're working at a hospital. There are, most hospitals in your area probably do some form of clinical research. So you want to check. If you're already in one of these places, you want to check, hey, can I actually transfer to the research department and start doing clinical research? Your first role in clinical research probably going to be clinical research assistant. The goal would be for you to become a clinical research coordinator as quickly as you can. So. If you just approach a site, a small clinic in your community, and they don't have private practice, they just do clinical research, you want to tell them you can bring four things to the table. Number one, you obviously have medical background, so can you draw blood? Can you process vitals? All those things are important to them. Number two, you have patient interaction, most likely, so you can help with patient recruitment, you can help with patient pre-screening, you understand medications. The MAs and CNAs and LVNs in my office, I'm amazed at how many medications they know. Like way more than the average Joe and Jane because of the nature of the work they do. So those two things right there, interacting with patients and then clinical operations, so clinical operations and then Pre-screening, understanding what a protocol is, inclusion, exclusion, understanding what the prohibited medications are. You already have that. So put that on your resume. Put those things on your resume and go in person and talk to the research site directors or the other study coordinators. And this is where LinkedIn comes in handy. If you don't have a LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn. Next thing sites need help with, getting studies. So clinicaltrials.gov. You can find studies and you can you will know what kind of studies the sites that you are applying to work on. If not, guess what you gotta do? You gotta stock their website, you gotta stock their socials, you gotta stock their LinkedIn, their Instagram, and see what they're recruiting for. What are they advertising for? Is it osteoarthritis of the knee? Is it lower back pain? Is it diabetes type two? Is it Alzheimer's? What is it? Number, this leads us to number four, social media presence. Okay, social media, those things you just stock them on, first of all, you find out if they actually have those things. Do they have Instagram? Do they have a Facebook? Do they have a LinkedIn? Do they have a TikTok? If not, you can approach those sites and say, hey, I can create and manage these things for you. Like, 
try me out. Let me volunteer. Give me experience so I could put on my resume. I really want to get into clinical research. It's just the act of doing this, the act of pursuing. Even if you'll get rejected nine out of 10 times, that one out of 10 appreciates somebody taking the initiative and the resolve on their own to go out there and create opportunities for themselves. All right, so I wanna go back to finding studies on clinicaltrials.gov. Once you stock them and find out what kind of studies they're, they're advertising for, you wanna go on clinicaltrials.gov, put in those therapeutic indications one at a time, and look at the studies that are out there, and you'll be able to see, okay, I can start applying for this study, osteoarthritis, here's the study contact. You could probably find 10, 15, 20 studies for them. And you don't need to email them. You just go into the site with an Excel file of all the potential studies they could be applying for and tell them, I can do this for you on a weekly basis if you want. All I want is some experience to shadow. By the way, all four of these strategies don't just apply to MA, CNAs, LVNs, LPNs, but you guys have the most practical skill set already a lot of transferable skills that you can bring on over to clinical research. You don't even know about it. The best thing about this industry is no glass ceilings, upward mobility like crazy, exponentially faster and higher growth potential and earning potential than what you're currently doing. Guaranteed. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Wanted to make this one for you guys, especially for all the new TikTokers. Take care.